Hello, good evening. Welcome to our discussion on the preparation of financial statements. We know that every business decision will find place in the financial statement. So in this exercise, we'll pick up an existing company's financial information and then understand the effect of the business transactions on the financial statements but with a focus on the cash flow statement and under the cash flow statement we will try to understand the cash from operations using direct and indirect method. So this business is having certain assets and certain corresponding sources so we'll use this information to create the opening balance sheet. So this, the assets of the business are plant, debtors, stock, shares, cash. So let us put that in the, so assets, plant, 80,000, the accumulated depreciation, accumulated depreciation minus 30,000 minus 30,000 then the debtors 55 and stock 65 debtors debtors 65 55 55,000 and stock 65,000 Shares of XY Limited, shares of XY Limited 50,000, shares of XY Limited 50,000 and cash 30,000 and cash is 20,000 and cash is 20,000. So we'll check once again. So these are the plant, the assets in the form of plant debtors, stock, cash and shares and this is the accumulated depreciation and it says that the, pl the, the plant is 3 years old so depreciation per year using SLM is 10,000 and these assets 240,000 of assets in a working we will try to understand the 240,000 of assets are financed by capital financed by capital, retained profits, the corresponding sources are like this, the bonds, creditors. The creditors account for 25% of the assets, the bonds account for 30% of the assets, the equity, the balance is the equity, so if you see the balance, the assets 240,000 minus this bonds and creditor is the balance is equity and 90% of the equity is retained profit and capital is balance. So that capital 10,800 and retained profit 97,200. So to summarize, the opening balance information is which is given here looks like this balance sheet when we put those items as on 31st March 2011. Now with this balance sheet the company undertakes the transactions and because of this we will have to prepare the income statement and cash flow statement. So the transactions are sold entire stock for 120,000 sales is 120,000 and this is for cash so therefore entire sale will appear in the cash flow statement and whenever there is a sale there has to be cost of goods sold and entire stock is sold so COGS is 65,000 but because the entire stock is sold, at the end of the year, no stock appears on the balance sheet. 
The next transaction is sold all shares at a profit of 20% on sales. So 20% on sales is 25%, 20% on, on sales is 25% on cost. Okay, we will use this when we calculate the price or the value of the sales. But you can, we can say that the purchase and sale of shares is not an operating activity so it may not be necessary to show the sale and the costs as a separate item. We can show that as a profit or loss on the sale. However, for the time being, let us make an assumption that we are showing all the entire sale and the cost together. So the shares are sold at a profit of 20% on cost means 25% on 20% on sales is 25% on cost. So the sale proceeds is 62,500 62, and that is for cash entire. In the same manner, we'll show the cost of shares as an expense that is 50,000. It's possible that instead of showing 62,500 and 50,000 separately, we can show the profit or loss and in this case profit on sale of shares 12,500. Then expenses for the year 20,000 but amount paid toward expense so there is 40,000. Expense 20,000 in the income statement but the payment towards expense is, uh, is 40,000 so therefore we say that an expense, if the payment is more than the expense, then in the balance sheet there will be an asset is 20,000. Next transaction, purchase a laptop costing 40,000 by issue of shares at a premium of 40. So, um, when we purchase a laptop so laptop is an asset so let us take and take and find out the number of shares to be sued so laptop is 40,000 number of shares to be sued will depend on the issue price so the number of shares is 40,000 by 50 and this number is required because the capital is always shown at the face value and the balancing figure is the share premium. Let me write down the face value of the face value of the share is 10. So because of the purchase of laptop, the asset will increase by 40,000, but the corresponding increase will be on the capital. So the capital will increase by 8,000 and share premium share premium will be the balancing figure 32,000 so in this case the acquisition of asset resulted in increase in equity increase in equity in the form of capital and the share premium so laptop increases by the, the asset increased by 50,000 and the corresponding source is the capital and the share premium respectively. So declare dividend 80% but before we declare dividend let us find out the profit but to find profit we have some other items to be recorded and depreciation as we have given SLM so therefore depreci accumulated depreciation becomes 40,000 the asset continues or the original cost because you have not sold any more asset or not sold asset or purchased any other asset. So depreciation is not a cash flow, depreciation is a reduction of the plant. 
then there is interest because you have bonds sitting on your balance sheet and interest 9% so 0 0.09 so these bonds are of 9% bonds 9% bonds and let us assume that entire interest is paid during the period otherwise there would have been a liability so all the expenses taken care we will now sum the total expenses then sum the total find the total incomes and call this as PBT profit before tax and profit before tax is 30,000 31,020 and let us assume that we pay 30% tax so 30% tax is 0 0.30 into that is 9,306 so the profit after tax is 21,714 and whenever there is a profit before that let us make the payment of the tax so now the company decides to give dividend and unless specifically mentioned the dividend is calculated on the face value of the capital and we are assuming that the dividend is given in this example on the closing capital so 0.80 but observe that we are not showing dividend in the expenses because dividend is an is an distribution of profit dividend is not an expense so let us so one of the tip one of the important items here is a distribution of dividend distribution of dividend and dividend versus interest difference the dividend is a distribution of profit whereas interest is an expense dividend is below the line item we don't show the dividend above the line when I say above the line above the profit if you want we can show the dividend below the line which shows the distribution of appropriation of profit whereas interest is above the line item dividend and interest however dividend and interest both are cash payments okay in this example definitely both are cash payments we paid the dividend we paid interest but what is the effect of dividend and pat on the balance sheet the retained profit will increase to the extent of 21,700 and reduce to the extent of the dividend distributed so the retained profit is changing because of the dividend and distribution of profit so the dividend taken care so cash in hand the cash flows 20,120.62 total cash available 202 and the total cash payments 40,6408 the tax paid 31,020 uh, tax paid uh, tax paid is sorry 9,306 and uh, the dividend paid is 15,040 so this is the cash outflow so cash in hand is 131,674 so that will appear on the balance sheet as asset since cash flow statement and income statement done no the transaction so bonds remain same creditor remain same debtor remain same shares we sold the shares we sold the shares we forgot to reduce that minus 50 so the balance sheet tallies so therefore to continue so whenever we have a set of transactions the with the opening balance sheet 
the closing balance sheet will depend on the transactions and the transactions will be reflected in the income statement and cash flow statement. Now with this cash flow statement which is receipts minus payment we can also prepare find cash from financing, cash from investment and cash from operation. Cash from financing in this case no inflow only outflow interest and the dividend paid. Since we are using accounting standard 3 of India we treat interest as a financing decision. The cash from investment cash from investment will only an inflow of sale of share no outflow so therefore 62,500 whereas cash from operation the rest of the items are cash from operation sales expenses and taxes paid and that gives us the cash closing cash in hand so closing cash in hand and opening cash in hand difference is reflected by CFO, CFI and CFF. But another question still remains to be addressed that if CFO is 70,400, 694 PAT is 21,714. Why CFO and PAT are different is because of depreciation, add depreciation. We add back depreciation is a non-cash item. We add back interest because it's a non-operating item. Cost of shares we add back because it's a non-operating the sale of share is a non-operating income but as I mentioned previously we can also show minus 12,500 depending on what we are showing here. Then comes the working capital changes. No change in the debtors. Change in the debtor is zero. Change in creditors is zero stock has decreased so therefore the entire so entire COGS is from the previous year so it has to be added back advance expenses increased so therefore we have to reduce that because we paid an expense of 40 but we shown only 20 so so this leads us to CFO we get CFO here 70,694. So given a set of transactions with the opening balance sheet, it's possible to prepare income statement, cash flow statement and the closing balance sheet and the relevant cash flows. Thank you very much.